Hey, good morning, everybody. This is a First Warren Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Brad Penovich here in Charlotte, North Carolina. You're looking at a close-up image right now of Hurricane Irene. The center right now is actually uh, just north of the island of Hispaniola. To me, it looks like it's right in here. There almost seems to be a little eye feature uh, trying to develop. We'll turn the infrared on here. And it's somewhere in here, it appears. Water vapor doesn't really show me much more. So we'll leave the visible on. One thing you notice here right away, uh, the big mountains here in Hispaniola are definitely having an impact right now on the inflow into the storm. So we clearly are interrupting some of the moisture flow coming down into the storm. Kind of interesting too, got a little cluster of storms off the southeast coast. Um, this is kind of interesting because uh, if there was ridging going on up here to the northwest, uh, we wouldn't be seeing these surface-based storms developing here. Uh, so this is definitely telling me there's a huge weakness right in here and this is kind of where the storm is going. Something else that's not boding too well for the storm, these little Arcus clouds or these uh, rope clouds, shelf clouds, whatever you want to call them, this is outflow from the thunderstorms on the northwest side. So there's clearly a, the storm is struggling on the west side. Typically one of the tricks of the trade that you use when you're looking at satellite imagery, these outflow jets or the outflow which are going poleward and equatorial that's a good sign for a healthy storm. But if the storm was going to be moving west, you would actually see outflow going that direction. So typically I look, where's the outflow building or going? And right now it appears to be north-northwest, which plays well with what's going on with the storm. Here are some tracks that I wanted to show you. You've seen all the spaghetti plots. I could show you all of them. They get kind of confusing. But I kind of simplified things in this one because, one, this track that goes straight, XTRP is just extrapolating the storm, moving in its current direction forever. But what I did is I took out all the kind of clutter and I put what's called the consensus tracks. And you'll hear me talk about that, but there's actually a cluster of, they're not exactly models, but these anything that begins with a T in the Hurricane Center models uh, is basically a conglomeration or a consensus or average of a group of models, seven to ten models. So if you plot all the consensus tracks, which are TCOA, TCBA, TVCE, TCOE, TCCN, and TVCC, you see something interesting. They're clustered together very tightly here uh, near or east of Moorhead City, Atlantic Beach, really right over the Outer Banks um, and the Pamlico Sound moving to the north and east. This back track back to the west was the 8 a.m. advisory, which they don't change the track until 11 a.m. So um, I will likely see this shift to the east. I would be shocked if it didn't shift to the east more. The Outer Banks really are the area that we're most concerned about right now uh, with the system as it moves north and east over the Outer Banks. The problem is this thing is going to be a huge storm. Down in this region, when it's approaching not only the North Carolina coast, but the South Carolina coast, don't focus on the lines because this stop monster storm will be approaching and bulldozing water up to the north and west. So all along the southeast facing coast, all the way even eastern uh, Florida, we'll see high surf, uh, maybe some storm surge, and high tides. There will likely be a lot of beach erosion and coastal flooding. Even if the storm recurves out to sea, which I anticipate it doing or clipping the outer banks, there is going to be a lot of impacts on the coastal regions from high water coming in from the coast. So needless to say, there's going to be a big impact even if the center of circulation goes off to the north and east. So just to put all of the models on here so you get an idea, we'll take them off and turn them all on. You actually see, even though the consensus models are right in here, there's actually quite a few that are shifting it offshore. So that's still a distinct possibility. But again, even if this thing barely clips the coast, the Outer Banks are going to have a significant impact. And when you look at the intensity forecast, you see a pretty consistent intensity forecast well from the models as well. All of them getting up there above 100, maybe 120, 125. Somewhere in here it's going to reach Category 3, borderline Category 4, before it moves off to the north and east. So my worry is that the amount of water that this storm is going to push from the Bahamas up towards the Carolina coast is still going to cause some issues. But that's the latest track. We will have the new advisory any moment now, and I'll have it posted on my site as well as WCNC.com, and I'll tweet it and Facebook it as soon as we get it.